Hello everyone. So today let us install uh, Drupal, Drupal 9, and uh, we will be using uh, Drupal Composer slash Drupal project. This is of course one of the template which uh, I prefer. I have been using it for a few years now and uh, it really uh, works well for my needs. And uh, before I install uh, this particular uh, Drupal version on my local instance, I thought I'll probably show you my setup. So right now I'm using uh, MySQL, MariaDB, MariaDB, I guess, uh, with uh, PHP and Apache, of course. And uh, all the configurations that are needed to be done are done. Basically, you can set up a lamp. And uh, along with the lamp, you also need to make sure that there are few extensions enabled. And you have to, do, you have to basically configure your lamp uh, so that uh, you can install and uh, manage Drupal installation. So right now I'm using uh, MySQL, which is uh, basically MariaDB version 15 point, not um, MySQL version 15.1, but I believe MariaDB is 10.6.5, I guess. So uh, for the setup, what I recommend is, uh, I mean, if you're on Arch Linux, by the way, so this setup is for Arch Linux. Of course, you now it is not really massively different from uh, other Linux distributions, but uh, if you want to do the same thing on Arch Linux, I highly recommend you to start with this particular uh, page, Apache HTTP server for Arch Linux, and uh, you can follow the instructions. But uh, I basically uh, have few things that are configured and tweaked for my needs. The main thing that, of course, you need to do is uh, you know make sure that you have your httpd hyphen v host file, which I can actually show you very quickly. Here I will show you the configurations that I have done for this particular site, sparksys.local. So the so the Drupal inst installation that I'm doing is basically for my company website, sparksys. And initially I was thinking of uh, using a Drupal domain module because uh, I do have uh, my personal website, ravisaga.in, and I was thinking maybe I can use a domain module for sharing not only the code, but also the database, which you can do, by the way, using domain module. This is actually a wonderful module. And uh, using this module, you can also have, along with one more additional module, you can actually have a different theme. So if someone is coming, coming to this particular site using, let us say, ravisaga.in, it will open ravisaga.in. But if someone is coming from sparksys.com, it will open sparksys.com. But uh, all the modules and database and even the content can be shared. So I tried it on my local and uh, it worked, but it was a bit slow. And uh, I thought maybe if I'm thinking about long term, I think uh, it would be it would be a better, I believe, if I have a separate uh, site altogether for my for my company. So that is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to set up uh, this site on local and from local, I will then uh, push changes to staging and then I will push it to production using, of course, Composer. And that is where a Drupal Composer project is really wonderful. So let us let us do simple installation today. And uh, I will share the journey, by the way. So my setup is nothing but this particular directory, which is my document root. And uh, this is my virtual host. Right now, of course, uh, because I'm doing this local development, I don't really have uh, uh, SSL configured. But on server, I do have SSL configured as well using a uh, Let's encrypt, which you can configure using Apache cert bot. So, anyways, so this is something that you know I have, you know, a simple setup or directory for my document root, sparksys.local. Then I have my error log, access log, and uh, my directory. So, let us uh, take a look at the directory. And uh, right now, we are inside uh, this document root. And uh, what I will be doing is I will be creating a folder here called public underscore HTML where I will basically copy files from this repository. And because we are trying to install Drupal 9.3.0, which is latest, so this will basically come here. And whenever I, do, whenever I uh, create a directory, I try to follow the same name everywhere so that it is much more convenient if I'm using maybe another installation. If I have the same directory structure, uh, I don't have to worry about remembering where to go. I know it is public underscore HTML. And because within pu public underscore HTML, I will get all the files which are basically listed here, um, along with, of course, uh, you know, a, a site 
folder called web. And, 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 if, I, and if I actually open my vhost file, let me just do it very quickly. The document root is uh, not public underscore HTML, it is actually public underscore HTML slash web. So slash web it would be the directory where uh, uh, all the files will, will sit, you know, the Drupal files. But uh, within public undersc underscore HTML, composer will uh, create composer.json, uh, composer.log file that will manage the installation. So let us uh, do, this, uh, do this installation. And uh, if you're using composer, what I recommend is if you're a, if you face uh, memory issues, you can use uh, composer underscore memory underscore limit is equal to minus one. And then you can, of course, you now copy the command. And uh, the directory that we want to create is uh, public underscore HTML. And uh, let us wait for this to finish. And while this is happening, I will probably show this particular post where I have documented my setup. and. Uh, and and of course, you know, uh, if you want to do the same thing, you can take a look at this file. This is like a my run book. In this particular file, the, these these uh, f instructions or whatever you want to call is nothing but uh, um, my setup that I have been doing, not only for installing but also for uh, updating Drupal with Composer, with proper uh, development workflow. So Drupal is now in, now you know the files are now on local. What we what we need to do now is to set up database. So let us log into the database and uh, create a database for our Drupal installation. So let me log in. I hope I remember the password. Yes, the password is correct. And for my database, I want to use this uh, name db underscore local underscore s underscore sparkses and uh, character set uh, character set is uh, utf8 mb4. And collation, so you know you can just copy it from the Drupal website, Drupal.org, and let us create the database and quit. And I guess we are now ready to install the Drupal Drupal nine, I guess. So what what we'll do? We'll go to Drupal dot not Drupal but Sparkses dot local, and it will it it will now ask for the installation. So this is the installation wizard, and uh, we want to install it in English. Do we have English UK? No, I, I guess it is okay. Save and continue, then standard. And uh, oh, we have a problem. So it says uh, configuration sync directory and automated attempt to create the directory failed, possibly due to permission uh, problem. And uh, what we will do now, we will probably take a look at the directory or basically the uh, permissions on this particular uh, directory. So let us take a look at it and uh, I will also open this uh, handbook and I believe I should have uh, somewhere the uh, in this particular file I have uh, correct file permission. So this is something that I can actually copy straight away. So what I'll do is I will copy this file. Uh, I think the Drupal root should have uh, 755 and uh, rest of the rest of the permissions are listed here so you know for all the files and also for the for the folder so let us take a look at this one first config and slash sync nothing here and uh, where is the error okay so to proceed with this installation please create the directory and modify its permission okay let me just create the directory here i'll go to this directory and uh, I guess what I can do is I can create a file, not a file but a directory, mkdir config and uh, mkdir config sync. Oh, sorry, mkdir. Okay, let us try again and uh, I hope it works now. Try again. Yes, it works. So this, so the, the database name is uh, db underscore uh, local underscore sparksys and uh, I'm going to use root you, sh you should, should not use root but I like living on the edge so I don't really mind because I'm on local <laughs> but uh, anyways on my server remote root uh, connections are disabled and save and continue it will of course install uh, the 
Drupal 930 version on this particular uh, machine, mm -hmm. my local setup. And once this is installed, I will then of course work on the site and uh, then uh, I will try to copy some of the content from my old website, which is you know, live right now, sparksys.com. I will copy content, not all of it, but some of it from this site to, I, I'm not, I, initially I was thinking of upgrading this and uh, I tried it by the way, I tried it using a Drupal Composer project, which actually you can do. I mean, it is not really a complicated procedure. I do have instructions for it. If you go on top, I believe uh, there is a section here called move existing site to Drupal Composer slash Drupal project. So you can also do that, but it didn't really work for me. And because uh, my sparksys.com is on uh, version 8.5, a bit old, uh, I thought, you know, let us do it from scratch. And uh, it is also a good opportunity for me to, uh, to, to basically create a site uh, with uh, nothing but, you know, Drupal. And uh, this particular site, sparksys.com, is actually one of my oldest Drupal site. Uh, I never really, I think I started with Drupal 4, I guess, or maybe Drupal 5, I don't really remember, but yeah, it has been uh, there for a long time. And there, there were some problems as well in the database, which I never really bothered to fix. So that is why I'm trying to now, you know, do everything from scratch. And let us uh, do some initial setup. Sparks is solutions. And uh, site email address is uh, admin at sparkses.com. Username, I think uh, I will use my own name, I guess. Why not? Should I use... Uh, this password, yes, let us use this password, but I don't really remember the password. So let me just, uh, uh, maybe I can just take a look in, or maybe I'll just, you know, type in the password. And uh, what is it? Default country, United Kingdom, time zone is London, check for updates automatically, yes, I'm fine with that. Save and continue. And, uh, this will, I guess, uh, give us the default theme. What I will be doing, I will be using a bootstrap and a bootstrap uh, sub theme, which I already have, by the way, for uh, my, for my uh, ravisagar dot local. I mean, this is of course ravisagar dot in, which is on local, but uh, I use normally my own theme, my own sub theme for uh, uh, my own sites. So this this is something that I will of course copy. Contrib or custom. It should be in the custom. Yes. So this is the theme which I will be using. Ravi Sagar theme. Which is nothing but I you know sub-theme of Bootstrap which you can do very easily. And that is it. So this is uh, my this is going to be my uh, my start of setting up a Drupal website and what I will do, I will try to document and uh, maybe create uh, useful videos for you guys in case you want to do the same thing with Drupal, Drupal 9. And that is it. That is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much. Bye bye.